Okay, so we're finally ready to show you our van. It's been so much work getting it to this stage and it feels so good finally being on the road. Mm -hmm. We're really excited to show you the final result and we hope you're excited to see as well. <laughs> so this is our custom built van. It's uh, one of a kind. Yeah, it's pretty much handmade. We <laughs> tore out everything, which you might have seen in the previous videos and we built it up by hand with really simple tools. So it's kind of crooked, but it's I think it's part of the charm. <laughs> yeah, it's completely unique whether you like it or not, but uh, yeah, yep. you're gonna be the judge of that now. Let's see. <laughs> okay, I will start by showing you the heart of the car, which is the kitchen, <laughs> pretty much where everything happens. <laughs> so this is all custom made, uh, as you can see, kind of crooked somewhere, but it works. We went for a kind of minimalistic Scandinavian style. So here we have our kitchen top. We have a sink here with the running water and a double gas top. Um, the gas is underneath in the closet here. So we tore all of the old interior out and when we rebuilt it, we customized it in a way which we found most convenient. So here is a pretty big closet where we have our frying pan, some dishwasher, lids, everything, which isn't so practical to have out in the open. But we need to make coffee, just some bowls, and cutting plate. And underneath here is our gas, which we turn on and off. And on the other side, under here, you can also lift this one up, is our second battery. The leisure battery. Uh, under here you can also see our battery charger, which we connect when we're plugged in on a campsite. This is also where our trash is. <laughs> we also have some drawers here. The top one is our cutlery, just basic ones. We have some knives for cutting, our bread knives, some scissors to cook eggs, <laughs> cheese slicer, yep, everything you need to make a decent meal. And the bottom drawer is kind of a messy one <laughs> where you have everything you can fit somewhere else. And here is our built-in fridge. I don't know if you can see it from that angle, but it's not that big, but it actually fits everything we need. And it's really nice to have chilled drinks and water when it's super hot <laughs> outside or we've been hiking. So that we really appreciated that feature. And uh, moving on at the end of our top here, we have a very spacious apartment where we have all of our like, uh, food that doesn't need to be chilled it's a really big space and uh, below there is the water tank so we can easily re just remove the false bottom and we can check if there's any problems with the water tank so that's pretty practical at the end here is our uh, electrical stuff the fuses and the switches for our uh, appliances we have a LED list here. It's hard to see in the daylight. This is for the fridge and our water pump. And this one controls the charging ports. We have two USBs and a 12 volt socket here. And uh, yeah, we can check the status of our battery here. It's actually running really low now. <laughs> and then we have some uh, nice mugs hanging here. And uh, we built a custom shelf here at the top. Uh, and that just gives us a lot of uh, sorely needed uh, storage. So here we have some chargers, my glasses, some few things just to decorate our old film camera and uh, bowls and some drinking cups. And uh, all of this can of course be uh, shut down at night. We have these beautiful curtains, which we also made ourselves with nice leather uh, bands to keep them in place and uh, yeah we hang 
we needed to have some light in here so these are LED bulbs uh, really nice they last forever and they run on battery so we can use them uh, anytime and just change the batteries if they are getting weak and I just had to show you this clever idea we got we strapped bungee cords here to keep uh, tighten and then we place some leather bands in between and uh, this makes it so that the different uh, mugs and the bowls we have up here won't be clinking when we drive so this is really cool because it's super flexible you just move these bands if you need other items in between and uh, yeah pretty clever solution I'd say and uh, this also goes in the back for the curtains where we can slide the curtains back and forth so these bungee cords are really really good okay moving up to the upper floor <laughs> which is our bedroom <laughs> right now we don't have um, the mattress and everything we're gonna I'm gonna show you a clip of how it looks when we have everything in place but it was a lot of work because we replaced the entire uh, tent because it was molded and really nasty uh, and we only had one window, so it felt like a dirty, dark coffin. <laughs> and now we have three windows instead of one. And as you can see, it brings in so much more light and also air. We can adjust with uh, zippers. And we also have mosquito nettings, which can be open if you want. Yeah, it's completely, completely open. Uh, also, in the top, we have a vent, which we can adjust. Uh, which is nice to have as the heat rises it can be nice to have a, a ventilation option up there uh, we also did a whole new ceiling uh, which is uh, water resistant uh, which could come in handy <laughs> we also have a LED uh, light going all the way around which is nice to have uh, if you're just chilling upstairs on our phone or reading or something which you could show you. it's hard to see now but I can show you how it looks when it's dark so uh, the procedure <laughs> to make the bed is you pull out uh, this kind of bottom for the bed and then you put it all the way out and then you flip this um, last piece which makes it a full size bed. Uh, so it's really comfy and I must say I really enjoy sleeping up here. I was worried it would feel too exposed and kind of um, claustrophobic but I think the windows and that is all white helps a lot. You might remember the old fabric on the sofa and the two front seats. It was this worn red fabric, which we didn't like too much. And uh, with this style that we were aiming for, we wanted something else. So we went with this blue color. Uh, we made this ourselves, actually. We got some uh, help uh, finishing this. Thank you, Benedictus mom. <laughs> really helpful. And then we completed the look with some, yeah blue pillows just to keep it a bit cozy and uh, the good thing is that it's a really uh, tough material so it can uh, last long and uh, it's all uh, we can remove it with just some buttons underneath so if it needs to be washed we can just do it uh, easily as the old fabric the red one was just uh, nailed to the sofa so we couldn't get it off without ripping it apart so that's a nice feature and underneath the sofa, of course, we have uh, more storage, really important. And as you can see here, we have tools and other things we don't really use that often. Hopefully, even though the car seems to be breaking down <laughs> from time to time. And uh, this is actually really heavy. And I just came up with a simple idea to keep it up. I mean, it's really basic, but it does the work. So now we can uh, arrange and find the tools you need. And it's pretty spacious, actually. It holds a lot of stuff. We have cables for the power when we're connected to a campsite. And yeah, just a lot of things which we won't have floating around elsewhere. So this is really helpful. And also the sofa turns to a flat bed. If I just pull the seat towards me, this will all go flat. And then there is an extra mattress in the back. And uh, yeah, it can comfortably sleep two persons. However, we didn't bring the back mattress on this trip because we anticipated to be sleeping upstairs all the time and then the mattress would just take up extra space. So we sacrificed the mattress for more uh, storage. And in the back there is a lot of space. We'll show you that uh, afterwards.
front here we have kind of an extension of the kitchen. Uh, we have some clamps uh, which used to hold a curtain I think. Uh, but we use them to hang like kitchen towels, things that need to be dried, socks, jackets, um, our caps. Yeah, they've come in really handy. So also we have an extra space here, which uh, we figured would be silly enough to use. So here we have a power supply when we're connected to um, uh, power on the campsite. Uh, we can use this to charge all of our stuff. We also have uh, access to a room underneath the front seat, um, which you usually we would like to store like things you usually don't need that often because it's kind of hard to get, get to. Uh, but here we have uh, our table, which was kind of hard to find a solution for. Uh, but we figured out the easiest way for us, which is just to have the whole table stored in there. I turn it around, you can see the leg, which is made a leather strap, so you can open it and use it. And up here we have the um, attachments, which goes on the the panel on the side door. Uh, so we <laughs> you can only use the table when the door is closed, but that's not really been a problem. So I'll show you how we put up the table now. Okay, so the tabletop uh, goes on two screws, which are on the wall. Uh, and then we have the foot for the table, which is <laughs> for the moment loose, because this was kind of a last minute build. We built it the day before we uh, went on this trip. So in the long run, it's probably gonna be more permanent. Uh, but for now it works. Uh, so we have room for two, one here, one there, and we can also turn the front seat. Uh, so then we have a cozy little seating area. And we wanted to have room for both our laptops, which we have. So yeah, happy with how it turned out. <laughs> Okay, so at the front we haven't done too much. Fortunately, we didn't have to do much here. Uh, what we've done, we have tried to fix the um, air condition. It only gives, like it's called fresh air from the outside, so it's never really cold, it's just air from the outside, and then the heating uh, luckily works. We mounted some more cup holders, because the old one here, they're too narrow for today's cups and bottles, so we needed to do something about it. It doesn't really look super good, but it's at least useful. And uh, of course, a clamp for our mobile phone to give us uh, navigation and stuff. We also sprayed the interior. Uh, I know some of you don't like it, but uh, I think it looks a lot better now. It's all like black matte-ish and uh, yeah, not really afraid to do things uh, here because it's, you know, it's our car and it's our desire, so we just did it. I'm really happy with the result. <laughs> we tried mounting a fan in the front to give us a bit more fresh air or air circulation in the front. Uh, we haven't really used it that much, but it's it's kind of nice when you're, say, in a tunnel or something, then it's really nice because you can't recycle the air in these old vans. Also, just a little Bluetooth speaker. Really nice and pretty good sound in the little thing. And uh, one major upgrade, it's kind of exterior really, but the mirrors. If you've ever driven a T3, a Vanagon, these old uh, Volkswagens, then you know that the standard mirrors are a nightmare. And in the ceiling we have uh, stuck a really rustic, old, really cool map. Uh, we're doing a road trip through the European countries and uh, yeah. It's just like a really cool detail where you can scout out your next location. So really pleased with the, the old map. Okay, so last but not least, we have the trunk, uh, which is really spacious as you can see. Right now we don't have anything uh, in here because we wanted to show you how it looks when it's empty. Uh, and also we wanted to show you how we pack everything in here, um, which you're gonna see later. Uh, we've done that procedure quite a few times because uh, our engine 
is in the back and we had uh, quite a bit of trouble as you might have uh, seen in our stories and then we had to take everything out and then pack it back in so on the right side we put in like a storage netting uh, which comes in handy for storing like clothes or whatever just an extra storage opportunity uh, we also wanted some light in the back if we we're like going through our bags looking for stuff so this is just like a uh, it's hard to see now but it's it is light in it uh, it also runs on battery so we don't have to worry about draining um, the second battery if we use it uh, on the left side we have a closet which is kind of messy <laughs> but here you can see all of our wirings and the control panel for the electrical system uh, we were planning on covering these or uh, building them in but we didn't have time for that but here we have some hooks to, to hang stuff and yeah just store like extra sleeping bags, uh, curtains which can be attached on the front windows, extra pillowcases, hats, shoes, whatever. And in the back of the closet we have a spare room where we used to uh, store our uh, sleeping bags. So we just stack them up and we have some uh, pillows for when we go tenting as well. Uh, so this is a storage room we use quite a lot. So that's our van tour. This is how Nordis turned out. And we have been living here for the last three weeks. So we have like got an idea on how it is uh, living in a van and uh, spending life on the road, driving from place to place. We have seen a new place every day. It's really exciting. And of course there are videos coming up on uh, our adventure in this van. Das auto zu dir bringen. Dann kannst du es dir ansehen. And uh, yeah, that concludes our tour. And if you have any questions, if there's anything you're still wondering about, like, I don't know, materials or what stuff we bring along. It's probably a few details we have forgot to mention. So if you have anything you're wondering about, just pop a question down below. Yeah, and uh, we'll answer as good as we can. Maybe we'll make a new video if there's something we see a lot of people want to see. And uh, remember to like and uh, subscribe for more content from our van. And uh, yeah, hope you like it. At least we do. Yeah, we do. <laughs>